Alright, welcome back to my Roblox Beginner Scripting Tutorial Series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode we'll be talking about if statements, but we'll also be talking about else if and else, but we'll get to that afterwards. So first what we're going to do is we're going to come here and uh, disable our function script because we're, we're about to create a new script here. So this one is going to be about if statements, that's what we're going to call this script. Okay, so what are if statements? If statements are a way for us to apply logic into our code that we're creating. So imagine like an if then scenario where it's like if a specific requirement is met, then we want to apply this specific code to our um, to our code. It's kind of like a path for our code to follow. If one specific requirement is met, then we want to execute this specific code. And there are two ways I'm gonna be showing you how this works. Uh, first, I will give you a conceptual example, and then I will give you a practical example of using if statements. So the way we're gonna begin an if statement is that we're going to first type in the keyword if. We're going to create a logical statement that can either be a true statement or a false statement. Now, if you remember from true or false statements, that ties into a Boolean. So that means for every single statement that we do for an if statement, then it's going to be tied into a boolean value of either true or either false. So let's say we do a mathematical operation. So we let's say if one plus one uh, is equal to two. Now, as you can see, Roblox Studio is throwing errors in here. It's because when we're comparing values, we can't use a a single, uh, we can't use a single equal sign. What we have to do here is that we have to do two equal signs here to indicate that we're comparing two values uh, to each other. Now, the reason we can't do one equal sign is because in, is, is because one equal sign is basically saying, I want whatever's on the left side to equal to the right side. It's an assignment operator, but it's not a comparison operator. A comparison operator is using two equal signs where we compare one value on the left side to the value on the right side. That's why if we're comparing Boolean values, we're using two equal signs instead of just one. So now that we have that out of the way, we have one plus one. If one plus one is equal to two, which it is, that's a true statement. We're gonna put a then statement here uh, to indicate that if one plus one is equal to, to two, then we're gonna put in the then keyword here and then we're gonna hit enter. And as you can see, Roblox has automatically put in uh, an end block here. We're going to do a print statement here saying that uh, this addition adds up like this is a this is a valid addition operation where one plus one is equal to two so that is a simple if statement right here um and so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the game we're going to hit play and then what should happen is that in the output it should print this addition adds up because one plus one does equal to two now let's say Let's just say one plus one does not equal to two. So let's say uh, if one plus two equals to two, then obviously one plus two is not gonna be equal to two. And if we hit run, then it's not gonna work. It, yeah, so in the output, it's not gonna print because one plus two does not equal to two. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to add an else statement here uh, to, to let us know that the addition does not add up. So we'll have another branch um, that will, we have another branch of code that will execute if the first statement does not work. And since in this case, this is not gonna work, we're gonna have to add an else statement. So what we're gonna do is right before the end statement here, we're going to drop two lines here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in else like this and uh, make sure the indentation lines up with the if statement so that, it, so that uh, the else statement is also here. Uh, so we're going to say else and then what we're going to say is we're going to make another print saying that this operation does not add up. And so when we go back to the game, hit play, then what's going to print is this operation does not add up because one plus two does not equal to two. So then instead of printing this, it's going to go into our else statement and it's going to execute this line of code instead. So that is, that's essentially what an else statement is, is that if any of these statements do not work out, then it's going to fall into this else statement no matter what. So now, um, I've showed you an if statement, I've showed you an else statement, but now I'm going to show you an else if statement. 
So what an else if statement is, if I go down here and type in else if, this is how an else if is written down. And so essentially what an else if statement is, is that if the first if statement does not work and we want to try again with a different kind of if statement, we can try again with this kind of statement with an else if. We can try a different scenario and see if that works. And if it does work, then we will, um, then we will execute that specific block of code instead of the one up here or the one down here. So let's say else if uh, one plus one equals two, which like I said earlier, one plus one does equal to two, so that is true. So then we're going to put in a then statement here. And then inside of here, we're going to say, uh, once again, one plus one does indeed equal to two. That's what, we're, that's what we're gonna say here. One plus one doesn't indeed equal to two. So if this one fails, it's going to check for this one. But since one plus one does equal to two, it's going to print one plus one does indeed equal to two. And it's just going to completely ignore this one because we know that this one is true. So if we go back into the game, hit play, then what should print out is, yeah, one plus one does indeed equal to two. So our if tree does indeed work because in our first statement, this one does not add up. So it's going to then check here for the else if one plus one does equal to two, which it does equal to two, then it's going to print this. And if it does equal to this, then it doesn't even have to check the else statement because we already know this is true. Let's say what if we change the else if to one plus three instead. If we go back into the game, then the if statement in the beginning does not add up and now the second one also does not add up, then that means it's going to go back into our else statement here. This operation does not add up. So I've conceptually showed you how an if, else, if, and else statement works. But now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, apply this to our functions uh, that, I told, that I taught you in previous videos. So let's create a function here. Function, we're going to do function addition again. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do number one plus number two, or not plus, but we're going to do two numbers here. And then we're going to hit enter like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to add if statements here. We're going to say if number one plus number two equals one. Okay, but it may seem like I'm going a bit too quickly. Uh, so to, to give you an understanding of what I'm trying to do with this function is that we're going to create scenarios of what blocks of code will execute when we call this function addition down here. So like, let's say we pass in a number one and then a number two, or no, no, a number one and then a number one again for number one and number two. If one plus one is equal to two, then we're going to execute this line of code here. And that's basically what we're going to, what we're going to be doing. If we call this function, it gives us more range into what specific kinds of code are going to be executed inside of this function that we create. So we're going to say, if number one plus number two is equal to two, then print, we can print, uh, let's say our, um, our numbers equate to two. That's what we're gonna say here. Uh, so then what we can do is we can put in an else if here with number one plus number two is equal to four. Then what we can say here is that our numbers equate to four. That's what we're gonna say here. Because like, what if we add in two numbers? That's like one plus three. So one plus three is equal to four, that's true. Or two plus two, that is all, that's equal to four. Then that's also true. These are, these are case scenarios where if we had two numbers that are equal to four, then it'll only print this line of code instead of this up here. And of course we have an if and an else if. So what we can do down here is we can just say else, uh, print no numbers add up to what we want or something. So that's what we're gonna say here. So now down here, we're gonna call in the function uh, addition. We're gonna call addition and we're going to call one and one for our first example, because one and one, that's going to print this here. And then if we call addition again, uh, two and two, that's going to call this down here. And then what if we do another addition, one and three, that's going to call this down here. So if we do addition, five and five, that's not going to equate to the if or the else if, so it's just going to be thrown into the else with no numbers that add up to what we want. So let's hit play. If we hit play here, then we should be seeing a bunch of results. So the first one being our numbers equate to two. 
because one plus one does equal to two. And then our numbers equate to four because two plus two does equal to four. And then one plus three does equal to four. So it printed this out twice. And then five plus five equals to 10, but none of them are reaching to our uh, if statements. So that's why it's just gonna be thrown into the else. So that's another practical example of using if if, else, if, and else statements. Now you might be asking, well, what if we have two if statements? So, and that's a good question. So let's uh, delete some of this code right here that's like inside of this function. So let's say we have if number one plus number two equals four. Uh, then we say print um, our numbers equate to four. But now down here, if we say if number one plus number two, or, oh wait, I don't know why I put uh, parentheses here. I shouldn't have done that. If number one plus number two equals to four, again, then we say print our numbers, numbers equate to four again. So if this, so if you're in a situation where this happens, where you have an if statement here with, with number one plus number two equals to four, and then you have another if statement of the same thing, number one uh, plus number two equals to four. If you have two if statements, they don't necessarily have to be the same logic. It just has to be whether you have two if statements. If you don't have an if or an else if, you just have two if statements, then these two are gonna be printed twice. So in our addition, let's, in our addition call, let's uh, do two and two. Instead. So what's going to happen is if we hit play again, then it's going to call both if and the other if at the same time. It's not going to be tied into whether we want one of them to fire and the other one to not to fire, but if we want to fire two at the same time then we're going to be using two if statements instead of an if and an else if and an else. That's the power of using two if statements at the same time rather than doing an if else if statement because let's say we add in an else if right here. Just so you know, you can do two if statements and you want two different things to happen in the same call compared to if you do one if and one else if uh, and an else, or just an if and an else if, if you want one thing to happen, if you want one specific part of the code to execute, rather than multiple checks at the same time, then it would be different if you want to have multiple if statements or if you want to have an else if, else if, and an else. So I hope this video about if statements helped explain it to you very well. Uh, and for the learning objective here, what, what you can do is, um, now you have a lot of power to, to do a lot of things. You can create variables, uh, you can do uh, operations with parameters, you can do if statements with else statements and if else if statements. And also one quick thing that I want to, want to show you before I end this video is return statements. So let's say that if we have a scenario with if and another if, what if we don't want this other print statement to check the same thing again to print it. What we can do is we can hit return down here in our first check. So if number one plus number two equals four, then we will print our numbers equate to four and then we return the statement. But you notice here this time is that we're actually not returning anything, but simply we're just ending the function right there. So that it's just not going to call this part of the function if, if we know that this if statement is true. So, in our return statement, we're not returning any value, but instead we're just ending the function right there. Everything that happens past this if statement is just irrelevant. If I had more code down here, it's not gonna matter because I fired a return statement here and it's just going to end the function there. So that's a another really important use case uh, for return statements is that it's very helpful for when you're using if statements or else if or else statements. So that's gonna be it for if, else if, and else statements. I, I hope you found this video helpful and I will be seeing you in the next episode. Take care.